There is no way everything is Tommy's fault. This is the Mount Rushmore of the technical failures of the Amico. But how do we spread the wealth of failure, right? I don't think it's all Tommy's fault. I think there's a couple of contributors here, and one of them doesn't get enough credit for his failure. Let's talk. Hello, humans, and welcome to another episode of Gen X Gamer. That's right. You know, everybody likes to dunk on Tommy, right? He was the face of the company, the default mascot of the company. But I, there's more than one person here responsible, right? There's a reason why I don't have a wood grain right now, a wood grain that I deserve, that I am due. And the responsible parties are not Mike Mullis or DJC or anybody at the Amico Forever show. It is actually these gentlemen over here who got paid for it. Now, this was incompetence at the highest levels, right? At the highest levels. Out of all these men, right, the only one that has actually lost money that they took from the company, meaning that they actually got money from the company and now <laughs> have to pay it back is Tommy. Right, because he's getting sued. And the other three are not helping him out. Ooh, I can't wait to hear those phone calls, those exchanges, right? But how do I divide this? Let me show you guys what I'm thinking about here when, when I think of these uh, of these percentages, right? And uh, let me just do it on paint here real quick. And this is the way I do it, right? The way I do it is is this way. Let me use, uh, I give uh, Phil 5%. Phil has just been brought on to, to take the heat, right? To be the face of the company and this finer failure. You know, I, I give him more responsibility if it was a Coleco Chameleon, which he doesn't like to talk about being a part of. <laughs> but I think his role in this company was pretty much the same as it was with the Coleco Chameleon. He was brought in to give the company more credibility, if you will. But by that time, the Camilo had already, Camico Chameleon had already happened, so it didn't have the same effect. It actually had the opposite effect of what they wanted. They just wanted to talk about uh, Tetris, right? And that didn't work out. By the way, guys, I'm going to give you a sample of what the members of the Cornhole Club get here. And uh, we're going to give out a Steam code in this episode. Ooh, all right. I'll give you the first five letters, right? And I'm going to sprinkle the rest throughout the video so you guys can can get it. Uh, the first uh, five are C as in Charlie, L as in Larry, J as in James, T as in Tom, and Q. All right, those are the first five. Now, you're asking yourself, well, what, what game are we talking about here, Gen X Gamer? What game here? Let me show you. It is Dread Out. Right? What is Dreadout? Dreadout is a third-person supernatural horror game where you play as Linda, a high school student trapped in an old abandoned town, equipped with her trusty smartphone. See, this would have been great on the Amico. Oh, but it's, oh, it's mature. Oh, but Phil's in charge now, so forget about that stuff. You could have this game on there, right? Play with your cell phone. That, you know, that's, that would have been great, man. That would have been great. And uh, if you like mystery... Uh, if you like horror, this might be your cup of tea. This is the game that's been uh, been given away. And let me give you the, the next five letters. RFP83. Now, with that said, let's get on with the rest of the show. Uh, let's see here. Let's go with 15% for Nick Richards. 15% for Nick Richards. Because this dude was not only getting a salary, he was renting out his property for extra money, right? He should have left the money in there and give people refunds, but he's not going to do that because this is all about the money. It is all about the money, right? And next is a man that doesn't get enough credit for his failures, in my opinion, right? And that is Mr. John Alvarado, and I'm going to use uh, this picture of John Alvarado without the mustache, Right, I, I know a lot of people. <laughs> you see, John Alvarado, according to Moby Games, aka Juan, Juan M. Alvarado, is his real name, I guess. 
But this is public information on Moby Games, guys. So anyway, he's been in charge of the product. He took the salary. I mean, at some point, you have to say, I'm cashing these checks and we're not going to get this done. We are not going to get this done. And I found another piece of evidence right, that I'm going to make a separate video on when it comes to the technical issues and the release date of the Amico. And that should be interesting, by the way. Uh, it'll be later this week. I need to talk to a patent lawyer. <laughs> right? So, And a patent lawyer in this area here, so... Uh, of Silicon Valley. So I just want to get more information, you know, so I can make a more detailed uh, video. But anyway, this gentleman here got a, a job himself, right? He got a, his son was working there too, and other family members. He only talks about the ones that aren't related to him. But it's over half a million dollar, guys, over half a million dollars in com compensation. And we got nothing. I don't have... I don't have my wood grain. I do not have my wood grain, right? And he's the chief technology officer, right? He was there side by side with Tommy in the presentations and the failed presentations of that tank tank. He was there. He was the man in charge. <laughs> you know, I mean, how can he not get more of the blame? You know, I know a lot of people get a little touchy because, you know, they don't want to seem they're going too rough on a Hispanic gentleman, but this is Hispanic on Hispanic criticism, right? I'm doing it. You guys have the right to do it. It's okay to say that he didn't do his job well. It's okay to criticize his job. I don't care about any uh, other thing that the job they performed, like criticizing their work, and their work is non-existent, right? And that leaves us with last but not least here, Mr. Tommy Tallarico at 50% because he was saying all these things. I get the impression this guy would just say shit. <laughs> he would just say things. Oh, we're going to do NFTs. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're going to do. And John's sitting in the background like, can, can we do that? And he's like, well, I could get some more overtime. Yeah, 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 we can do that. Yeah, of course, even if they couldn't do it, right? As long as they keep cashing checks, it's not a problem. These guys knew at some point they weren't going to make it and they kept cashing the checks and took bonuses on top of that, right? And it wasn't only Tommy, right? I know two things for a fact here, is that, that a contract was signed for manufacturing, meaning that they did intend to make something, but they couldn't manufacture the, the products because they hadn't passed regulations, right? That doesn't fall on Tommy. Tommy is not building the consoles. That's the inside of the company, when it comes to the inside technicals of the company, right? when it comes to the technology of the console, that falls on John Alvarado and his team. Right? That's why he deserves more of the blame. If everything that's out there is said to be true, and I'll give you the last letters here, E58XK, first come, first serve. <laughs> that's just a sample of what you get. With the Cornhole Club, guys, uh, there is so much to take, right? There is so much to take out of the Amico saga, and there's so many things that we learned throughout this process, um, not only with business, but what kind of projects you want to back, what kind of experience is worth something and, and what isn't, right? I really want to make a video about Atari Next uh, because they have done everything that Amico did didn't and in some very important factors and, I, and i've made a video about that before but i think this latest round of collectibles that they did at a thousand bucks <laughs> is something that in television wishes they could have accomplished but never did and the measure of success is do people buy things or do they not and people are buying atari products for sure and you know, is it too rich for my blood? A thousand dollars? Yes. But if it's sold out, it doesn't matter what I think, right? <laughs> it only matters what the people who bought those things think. And when it comes to selling anything, you know, and television just underperformed. And this is the Mount Rushmore of failure right here. These four gentlemen are the primary reasons we didn't get our consoles and we're not getting our refunds. And right now, 
we're just in limbo. What are your percentages? How would you divide the percentages of failure between these gentlemen? Let me know. Guys, thank you so much. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. New videos every week. Make sure you don't miss out and subscribe.